Contrary to popular belief, people don't realize that working is keeping them poor. Research shows that the wealthiest countries in the world also work the least. In 2017, a massive study conducted by the Urban Institute revealed that only 16 of people who lived half their lives in poverty were able to move up the ladder by their late 20s. These numbers were based on individuals who were consistently working or attending school. So many hardworking people, only a few of them were able to get out the hardest level of escape room. If you go out in the desert in the middle of the scorching sun, and you bring a shovel and you start randomly digging holes for 12 hours straight, have you worked hard? Absolutely zero doubt about it. But are you any wealthier? Around 73% of Americans believe that on a scale of 1 to 10, when it comes to success, hard work is a 10. And this is one of the problems with measuring success in such a black and white terms. It creates this illusion where successful people are considered hard workers, but those who aren't are considered lazy. And this is what today's video is all about, because this is the farthest thing from the truth. Is a single mother working three different jobs to support her children lazier than a CEO of a company making phone calls all day at his desk trying to figure out how to work Zoom? Of course not. Money comes from a specific value you bring to people. Sure, someone could be doing back-breaking labor for 12 hours straight. But is that a problem only very few people can solve? Probably not. An effective CEO can however close a deal worth millions of dollars with a five-minute conversation on the phone. So where did this hard work mentality come from? This mentality come from that brainwashed nerdy awkward teenage boy throughout high school in the 1900s. After Henry Ford's revolutionary assembly line gained tractions all across the US, we saw a huge boom in productivity, and with more productivity came a lot more money. So if you grew up during those times, your input was directly tied to your output. You equated your wealth with the hours you put into the factory. There weren't a whole lot of jobs during that time, and in a factory the more hours you put in, the more you were able to produce, and the more money you made. Those days are pretty much long gone. According to the US Bureau of Labor Statistics, manufacturing work has gone down tremendously from 32 in 1910 to 8 in 2013, while other types of services industries have increased. US economy has grown exponentially. Since then and now there are thousands of different paths to make money from such as YouTube, online stores, and only after work in part-time jobs. So you're hard at work right now, typing away in the office. You go in early and work late to make sure your boss is happy. You go home and you sleep for 4 hours, and then you go back to work to make your boss happy. You give up your free time to get more work done on the weekends to make your boss happy. And what do you get in return? Probably the same fixed salary as your co-worker Jacob. Although your boss may be grateful for all your effort, but he's not giving you a raise every month. You'll typically need to wait till the end of the year for a pay bump that doesn't even keep up with inflation. When you work for that hard for that long, the more you work, the more exhausted you become. When you get back home, you have trouble sleeping, or you might not have enough time to live life outside of work. Keeping yourself busy all the time prevents you from thinking outside the box. If you're constantly stressed out, your mental clarity and creativity will suffer. And those two things are the tools that you need to notice. Research found that increasing the workload from 40 to 60 hours a week did not produce an output of 50 or more, which is what you'd imagine would happen. Since you're working 50 more hours, instead the actual output from those extra hours was only between 25 to 30 percent. Giving it all your effort at work all the time will eventually burn you out, make you want to lay on the floor, reconsider life and daydream. Imagine. What would you achieve if instead of working those extra hours at your job, you went home and just lived or spent some time to think about effective ways to solve problems, start a new business venture, or learn to improve yourself? Chances are any of these things would financially reward you, much more than satisfying late at work to make your boss happy. Let's say you're being paid X amount for a wide number of hours that you work. Unless you're a doctor strange, you're limited by the number of hours that you can work 24 hours a day. There is a limit to how much someone will pay you for your skills. If you are a super successful doctor, sure you might be able to make $3,000 per hour, but eventually you hit a ceiling because the market won't pay a higher price directly. Trading time for money makes very few people wealthy. 
which is why 78 of American adults live paycheck to paycheck despite being the most overworked developed nation in the world. But here's the million dollar secret. The rich. They don't trade their time for money. Instead, they trade value for money. Value is easily scalable and isn't limited by the number of hours that you have in a day. Instead of thinking that as a job that you can work hard and that people will pay for, start thinking what value you can provide that will solve a problem. Here's a harsh truth. You are replaceable at your job and you are paid based on how easily you can be replaced. The more specialized skilled and more value that you can bring to your company, the more they will pay you because they will find it harder to replace you. That's why CEOs, surgeons, lawyers can get paid a lot of money. But even then those people are still replaceable. These are four things that you can do instead of working hard to get rich. Mantra of hard work is really damaging psychologically. And here's why. You work hard. You don't get rewarded or recognized. So you think you need to work even harder. This cycle continues until you burn out. You give up and then you blame yourself. Being honest with yourself is the first step. If your skills aren't up to par, take some classes or find a course online that will help you learn more valuable skills. The more you invest in your knowledge and your skills, the more you're able to leverage to ask for more compensation. Abraham Lincoln once said, Give me six hours to chop down a tree, and I will spend the first four hours sharpening the axe. The key to greater results is to work smarter, not harder. Then comes the focus. Focus on high-impact tasks. Chances are you have a super long running to-do list that you will never get to the end of instead of trying to accomplish every single thing and stressed out. Focus on a task that will have the greatest long-term impact, the things that are most critical to your job performance and the company's success. Next, always look for ways to solve someone's problem. If you go out in the desert and you start digging holes, no one's going to give you money for that unless there's like a desert dog who's paying people to take hold for him so he can bury his bones. But what if instead you convince a startup company to pay you a boatload of cash to dig holes in a very specific area so they can plant some trees? Same situation, completely different outcome. And finally, as unfair as it sounds, you need to be a little lucky. It doesn't matter if you're a genius or extremely talented at something. In the end, success or getting rich requires a little bit of luck and chance. Being in the right place at the right time, coming up with the great ideas, and having the right support system. It's also about financial literacy and knowledge. And life circumstances. Because two people with a very similar incomes can end up in entirely different levels of financial security. It's not to say that hard work isn't important at all. Of course it is. Unless you're super lucky. Wealth won't simply fall onto your lap. Just because you're staying late in the office every day doesn't mean you will be rich and successful. You need to work smarter to maximize your effort, your skills, and your value as much as possible to be wealthy and successful. Thanks for watching. Until the next one.